I'm John Cruz from Salem, Virginia, and I'm the president and owner of Missile Baits. Tell us about your family. Well, I've been married to my wife, Sonia, for 13 years, and we've got Noah. He's my stepson. He's 19, loves to fish, loves to hunt. And then we've got two girls, Ivy and Maya. Ivy is six and Maya is 11. When did you start fishing? Like not tournament fishing, but fishing. Fishing, fishing. Well, fishing. I grew up out in Amelia County, Virginia, and I, we had a pond out in the backyard. I mean, literally 80 yards from the house, we had a little teeny pond. And that little pond had bluegill and it had bass. And I could care less about catching the bluegill because I wanted to catch every one of those bass. And I, I remember when I was probably, and my dad didn't fish, so when I was probably six or seven years old, I caught a three pounder and I thought it was a record. To me, a three pounder was gigantic. And from then on, that's all I wanted to do. It was giant. It, it, I thought it was a 10. Right. Who got you into fishing? Well, my dad didn't. So we had, we had a guy that, that would work uh, for my dad, and his name was Willie Logan. And he was the guy that would go to that pond and take me down there and show me how to catch those bass, because that's what he loved to do. He loved to go around to the different ponds near where we lived. And man, once, once we started running around, we would, uh, we'd call it pond hopping. I'd you know, call Willie, hey Willie, let's go pond hopping. And then you know, we'd just go around and pond hop and ask people for permission and go fish on the property. It was awesome. All right, so when was your first tournament? The first tournament? Like a derby. Well, the first tournament that I ever fished, I was 15. I was fishing a lot of those ponds, and then I started reading Bassmaster Magazine, and one thing led to another, I was, and I said, I got to do some of these tournaments. So my cousin, Charles, he was, he's 15 years older than I am. He would, you know, go and look around and find where these tournaments were. And we found where this team tournament was at Smith Mountain Lake. And by that time, we had us a little 17 foot bass boat. And we said, we're gonna enter that tournament. And by golly, we caught us four bass and we brought them to the scales and we were proud of them. Did you get a check? We didn't even come close. But you still weighed in. You we weighed them in, up. we weighed them in. So then we sure cool did. Bringing your fish to the scales, looking at them. Oh my gosh. Seeing all the other anglers. And I, I looked around and I saw guys that had just, I mean, four and five pounders just bulging out of their bags. And I said, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be that guy one day. I'm gonna be that guy. And it took a long time to figure out how to stuff those fish into the bag. Did anybody help you once you started getting into tournament fishing? I had a, I had a couple uh, when I was, when I was 15 or 16 years old, one of the friends of my cousin was Rick Hawkins. And, and Rick, at the time, he lived on Smith Mountain Lake. He had fished a lot of local tournaments. Then he moved to California, fished professional tournaments out west, fished some back on the east coast. He really showed me the ropes as far as what you need to do to take your fishing to the next level. I had never, I, I did not have any idea of what practicing from sunup to sundown was until I met Rick. Had no, I thought everybody stopped at two o'clock. I didn't know until I met Rick. He taught me how to deep crank. He taught me a lot of different things, how to be a professional angler. And then also met Dr. Greg South when I was in college and he finished second in the Bassmaster Classic to, to Rick Klon. He spent a number of years as a professional angler and then decided to go back to his radiology practice and did not continue to pursue it. But uh, Dr. South taught me a lot of a lot of more of the finesse side than, than what Rick did. So it was a great, uh, great mixture for, for me to have those kind of two mentors. Your first professional bass tournament. My first professional bass tournament was a BASS tournament on Old Hickory in 1999. I, I fished in that tournament in, um, I'm sorry, it was September, two, it was September 2000. Uh, I had fished some FLW tournaments and, and bass tournaments as a co-angler. That was my first time in the front of the boat. I absolutely got waxed in that tournament. If I could have landed all the fish that I had on, I, I was catching them on a little crankbait, I would have, I would at least got a check. I'll say that much. Right. 
But in my second tournament at Lake Martin, my second bass event, my second pro event, I got a check. And then in my third pro event, I came in third and I won a bass boat and I sold it. And that kind of gave me the, the nest egg that I needed to, to keep going. What's the most you've ever won in a tournament? In a single tournament. Single tournament. I've won $100,000 at the Elite Series in, in California in, in 2010. Uh, that, was, that was definitely the, the biggest one payday. And it really it kind of stunk because in California, they take 7% of any kind of tournament winning. And so I had that check. And I was dying to have that check for $100,000, but I got a check for $93,000. No. I ended up getting that money back for you have to file, when you file your taxes you end up getting that money back so i get that check for 93 i never forget i walked into that that bank and deposited that check and uh, they had to go get two extra people out of the back to come out and certify to make sure the check was good before they put it in my bank account i did it actually at at uh, clear lake which is that town is built on bass fishing so they knew exactly what was going on what do you love about fishing what, well, what the, the fishing, in, fishing in, in yeah, fishing in general, I would have to say that it's just that there is no two days that are the same. It is the most challenging thing I have ever done in my life. There is no formula that works every time; does not exist. Right. You know, a good friend of mine, he told me there's two words that you need to eliminate from your vocabulary in order to be a really good bass fisherman never and always take those two words out of your vocabulary and you'll be a lot better bass fisherman and, it, and that's just the way it is because it's so it, it changes so much there's there's just it's never it's never the same I, and I, I i hate it and i love that part of it it keeps me coming back why did you start missile baits well missile baits was forming many years before i actually started missile baits so, and we we went full-time in January of 2012. That's when we started selling to the public. But I would say three, four years before that, I knew that I wanted to start my own company within the fishing industry. I initially thought that I may do it with a partner or two. One thing led to another. And then by the, you know, by the time we got closer to when I realized I wanted to start a soft plastics company because I'd been designing baits for Spro for a while. I really enjoyed the design aspect and the promotion. Then we got into, you know, I said, well, I need to do this for soft plastics, but I, I came free in soft plastics sponsor wise. I said, man, I have all these ideas I want to put in, put into place. I want to start a new brand. So then that's what uh, missile baits kind of, kind of came into fruition. What do you love about the fishing industry? Well, it's, it's a fun industry because there's a lot of really good people in the fishing industry. A lot of good friends. You may, I've made, I, you know, some of the companies that we compete with are some of my best friends uh, in, in the fishing industry. And, and it's just a, it's an interesting dynamic. It's almost the same dynamic I have on tour is competing against other professional anglers, but those guys are, are some of my best friends. And that's, that's the, it's the exact same thing within the fishing industry. And so for me, I've got both of, I've got both of those dynamics going on and, and that's really, they're really neat. What would you rather catch? A small mouth, a large mouth, or a spot? That's a, that's a tough, tough one. question. If I could say just one, I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to go old school, and I have to go back to my largemouth. The largemouth, you have, you still have the legitimate chance to catch a 15, 16, 17 pound. I've never caught a teener, never have, and I would. I've got to catch at least one teen bass of some sort, 13, 14, 15. You just, you're, just, you're not gonna do that with a spot or a smallmouth. I mean, they're awesome. I love catching them. It's uh, shoal bass as well. I love catching any bass, but there's something about the chance to get one of those just absolute mammoth, mammoth bass. I just, I gotta go largemouth. I got you. What's your personal best? My personal best is an 11 pound largemouth. I caught it on the Harris chain in a tournament, in a Bassmaster tournament. The crazy part about it, I did not even get big fish that day. There was uh, Art Ferguson 
caught an 11-1 on a Carolina rig, Carolina rig and a Cinco. Who, who Carolina rigs a Cinco? I guess he doesn't. Right. It's got a look. He's so, a liar. But anyway, he he got big fish for the day, but I made the top 12 in that tournament, and he did not. So I wasn't too upset because that was the first top 12 that I had made on the Bassmaster Tour, and and I was I was very excited. It was a giant. What other passions do you have um, other than fishing? Other than fishing and my family, you know, I love to work out. And I feel like that staying in shape and working out hard helps keep me mentally focused. It helps keep my energy levels high. It helps my body get used to and conditioned to be able to recover from, from the days out on tour. I mean, out on tour, it's physically grueling to fish from sunup to sundown and do it over and over again, day after day after day. And if your body's not good in good physical shape, you, you're just not gonna last. You're not gonna be mentally focused. And, and I feel like that that's, I have to have everything in my favor to, to compete at the high level. I love being a, a gym rat, but it, finding the time is the only, only tough part. What would be your favorite Anchorman quote? The arsonist has oddly shaped feet. That's a really good one. How do you get ready for an interview? Like, I didn't see that today but i know you have like a um here let's just let's okay. just let's just ad lib like that let's just ad lib here okay, and and go um an interview right now all right so just go ahead and warm up for us um the pleasant <laughs> see that's why you have to warm up with it it's tough it's a tough one all right let me try again <laughs> the pheasant flies forward on fridays that's good that's tough that was a tough one. See, if you can get through that one, you're ready. Yeah. You're ready for the air. Yeah. yeah. There you go. The pleasant flies. <laughs>